Hey there, this is Mr. Pi Larsky. We're going to be talking about section 4.1, congruent fingers. We're going to do this in two parts. This first part is just going to be addressing and defining congruent figures. So let's get this party started. First, we have a definition of congruent figures. Congruent fingers are the same shape and the same size. Specifically, a congruent polygon. Congruent polygons have congruent corresponding parts which means corresponding sides must be congruent and corresponding angles must be congruent. So let's take a look at what that means, congruent corresponding parts. Here we have two quadrilaterals. We have quadrilateral A, B, C, D, and we have quadrilateral W, X, Y, Z. You see I've color-coded the vertices to help us understand or identify the corresponding parts. This vertice A corresponds to the verte vertex X or the point X in quadrant the other quadrilateral. B corresponds to X in the other quadrilateral. C corresponds to Y and D corresponds to Z. When we make our congruent statement, we would state that quadrilateral A, B, C, D is congruent to quadrilateral W, X, Y, Z. Notice we lined up or matched up the corresponding vertices. Therefore, we can say that side AB corresponds to side WX. Notice how I said that. Side or segment AB corresponds to WX. Again, I said it in the same manner and kept the corresponding vertices in the same order. That brings us to our next slide. When naming congruent polygons, the order of the congruent vertices must match in the congruent statement, and we saw that in the previous example. Example one here lists all the congruent corresponding parts. We are told that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. From the congruent statement, we should be able to conclude, or you should conclude, that A corresponds to X, B corresponds to Y, and C corresponds to Z. So when we go to make our congruence, uh, write out the congruent corresponding parts, we would say that angle A is congruent to angle X. Angle B would be congruent to angle Y. Angle C would be congruent to angle Z. Listing the corresponding sides, it's pretty simple. Uh, segment AB would be corresponding to and congruent to segment XY. Uh, notice the highlighters I use, the yellow to the B, or the yellow to the blue, the yellow to the blue, or AB is congruent to XY. Next I'll say BC is congruent to YZ. And finally, AC is congruent to XZ. We should be able to do that without a diagram because the corresponding vertices, the order of them is very important. Moving on to example two is going to take a little bit of work. Um, it tells us to find the measure of angle W and we are told that polygon ABCD is congruent to polygon VWXYZ. Now from that congruent statement we should be able to determine that angle B and angle W correspond. We are really given very little information about polygon VWXYZ and thus would have to find the measure of angle B and then conclude that the measure of angle B and the measure of angle W are the same since they are corresponding parts of congruent polygons. So to find the measure of angle B, we first have to use the polygon exterior angle sum theorem, which tells us that uh, n minus 2 times 180 will give us the, or the polygon angle sum theorem, not the polygon exterior angle sum theorem, just the polygon angle sum theorem. This expression, where n is equal to the number of sides in a polygon, 
will give us the sum of the measures of all the interior angles of a polygon. Well, we have a five-sided figure here, so we would replace n with 5 to give us 5 minus 2 times 180, which would give us 3 times 180, which is equal to 540 degrees, which means the measure of all the angles in polygon A, B, C, D is equal to 540 degrees. So we would need to add these five angles together, the sum, find the sum of their measures, and set it equal to 540. Since we're solving for the measure of angle B, I'll start the equation with that. The measure of angle B, plus 132, plus 90, plus 90, plus 88, is equal to 540 degrees. That would be the measure of angle B, plus the measure of angle A, which is 132, plus the measure of angle E, which is 90, plus the measure of angle D, which is 90, plus the measure of angle C, which is 88. When we add all those together, it'll give us, or simplify that equation, or to give us the measure of angle B, plus 400, is equal to 540, and then we subtract 400 from both sides to solve for the measure of angle B. So we find the measure of angle B to be 140 degrees. And since angle B and angle W are corresponding parts of congruent polygons, we can conclude that the measure of angle W is also 140 degrees. In example three, we need to justify or decide whether the triangles are congruent, then we need to justify the answer. In this, to do this, we need to understand the definition of congruent polygons in relation to triangles. And triangles, two congruent triangles means they have three pairs of corresponding angles and three pairs of corresponding sides. We can see that side AB has a measure of 3 and this side here, side ED, also has a measure of 3 so those sides are going to be congruent. So we can mark them as such. We are given that AC is congruent to EC by the marks on the line so we can just write that down. AC is congruent to EC, and similar to the sides AB and ED, BC and DC are both uh, given with a measure of 4, so the length of BC is equal to 4, which is equal to DC, which means that those sides are congruent. So here, we've established the three pairs of corresponding congruent sides. We can see that A, angle A and angle E are marked congruent. So angle A is congruent to angle C. We can see that angle B and angle D are both marked right angles. And you should know that all right angles are congruent. So angle B is congruent to angle D because all right angles are congruent. Finally, this angle BCA and this angle DCE, they are not marked congruent, but they are angles formed by intersecting lines, which makes them vertical, which by the vertical angle theorem makes them congruent. So angle BCA is congruent to angle DCE because vertical angles are congruent. Therefore, we can conclude that triangle ACB is congruent to triangle ECD.
And finally, part B of example three, we need to decide whether the triangles are congruent. And we can conclude that um, the three pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. J and M are marked congruent. Angle N and angle K are marked congruent. Just like we did in part A, angle J, L, K, and angle M, L, N are vertical angles, therefore they are congruent. But the corresponding signs are not necessarily congruent, so the two triangles are not congruent, or we cannot conclude or decide if they are congruent. This has been part one of lesson 4-1 on congruent fingers. Be sure to check out part two of lesson 4-1 where we will prove triangles congruent through the definition of congruent triangles.